I want to show you a little trick that has improved the performance of so many components that I have built, but let me walk you through a little scenario on our way to that point. So what we're looking at on screen here is a component from one of the Elite Ionic modules. Basically, this is a directive that you can add to an ion content area to create this parallax header. So you can see that effect a bit if I scroll here. And the basic idea with parallax is that the stuff in the background is going to move slower than the stuff in the foreground, and that's going to give it a sense of depth. So this image at the top here, that is going to appear to move slower than this content that is scrolling over the top of it. And you can kind of see that with the grass here. If you watch the grass, you can see that disappears as this content area slides up. So let's take a quick look at the code for this directive. We're not going to be walking through this now, but I just want to give you a brief overview. So you can see we have an ion content here. And the basic idea is that we can supply these parallax properties here to say which image we want to display and how high the parallax area should be. And then we have the directive itself, which I took some time to design quite nicely. We're using transforms for the animation. We're even using the DOM controller here as well to do our writes. So in terms of things we should watch out for with performance, basically doing everything right here. We're using transforms, uh, being careful with what we're writing to the DOM. So surely as a reward for all this great effort in uh, being careful with performance, we should have a pretty performant component on our hands here. But I don't know if you can notice through the video, but certainly when I'm using it, I can tell it feels a little bit janky. So as I'm scrolling, it's kind of a little bit stuttery, which for a uh, component like this isn't really what you want. You kind of want that beautiful, smooth effect. It's why you add it in the first place. So to have it be a bit stuttery doesn't leave a great impression. And to be honest, it'd be better just to not have it at all. So if you design this component, you might be feeling a little bit bummed out at this point, but what you can do is investigate this a little bit further. And a lot of the time when you are designing things well, when you are just using transforms, a lot of the time, the issue you're going to be running into here is with unnecessary paints. What you can do is open up the rendering tab through the Chrome dev tools. If you don't have that open already, you can just click on these three dots here, or you could use the command palette as well. Uh, just go to more tools and then rendering. And what you want to do is enable paint flashing. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to flash a green rectangle over any areas of the screen that are being painted. Now, if I scroll, you can see that we have green boxes being, uh, well, they're flashing on the screen right now. So this implies that there are paints being executed as I scroll, but with the way I have designed the component, there shouldn't be a need for that. We're just using transform. So hypothetically, we should just be triggering the composite step of the browser rendering process, which basically means we just have layers that need to move around the screen. They don't need to be repainted onto the screen. Nevertheless, obviously those paints are still happening. So what I want to do is I want to show you the performance of this right now. So if we take a performance profile, let me just get rid of that rendering uh, box. So I'm going to uh, record a performance snapshot here and I'm just going to scroll around a bit and then hit stop. And if we just focus in on one area, we can see a lot of red. And in terms of Chrome Dev Tools, red is not a good site to see. What this means here is basically we have a lot of dropped frames and those dropped frames are going to result in a much jankier animation. So this confirms what we sort of already knew just by playing with it, it felt a bit janky and we can see that it is indeed a bit janky. And we have an idea of why by using the paint flashing uh, option, we can see that too many paints are occurring when they don't need to be. Now, the good news is when you are dealing with too many paints in a situation where you're using transforms, a lot of the time, the problem can just be instantly solved by using the will change CSS property. So all I need to do in this circumstance is add that to the elements that I am transforming. Now I'm doing this dynamically here because I've created a directive that is being applied dynamically to an element, but you could also just define this directly in your CSS. You would just add the will change property to whatever CSS selector you need, and then basically let the browser know that you're intending to change the transform property. Now what this will do is basically notify the browser that you're intending to animate this property, you're intending to change the property, and the browser can prepare for that and make some optimizations so that when it is executed, it's going to do it a lot more smoothly. 
So to begin with, let's just go with that one property. We'll set will change just on the header section. So I'm going to save that and we'll jump back into the browser. I'm just going to clear all this out and let's bring up that paint rendering or paint flashing again. And if I scroll now, you can see we get a bit of a different result with the paint flashing. The header section is now no longer flashing, but we're still getting flashing occurring in the content area. So now let's go and add will change to that area as well. So now both the header area and the content area have their will change property set to transform. And if we scroll now, paint flashing is still enabled, but as you can see, there is absolutely no paints occurring on the screen anymore. And again, I don't know how well this translates to, uh, to video, but I can certainly see and feel that this is a lot smoother now. And just to confirm that, I'm going to turn paint flashing back off and we'll do another performance profile. So I'll just hit record and we will scroll around for a bit here and hit stop. Now, if we zoom in on some areas, we see a lot of green. So we're getting at 60 frames per second with no dropped frames. If I zoom out a bit, I think there are some, probably some red frames somewhere. There we go. There's dropped frame there. I think, I think that is actually the only dropped frame. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a few drop frames here or there, but now we are dealing with a vast majority of green frames, which means we're not dropping frames. We're ach achieving 60 frames per second. And this animation is going to be playing very smoothly. So that is the trick. Enable paint flashing. See if you are dealing with unnecessary paints. Add the will change property. See if it gets rid of those paints. And if it does, you probably just improve your performance uh, by a lot. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.